How does your country, Estonia, view what is going on in Ukraine? First, the annexation of Crimea by Russia, and now Russia's backing of pro-Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine. Well, I'd like to say that being members of the EU, but also being, being members of NATO, of course, we share the understanding and the views together with our allies and partners in those organizations. And for us, there is no question about Russia violating international law, the fact of annexation of Crimea, and the fact that the acts that are uh, taking place today in eastern part of Ukraine are also either sponsored or supported by Russian government. And the recent events, they have changed the world. They have changed Europe but they also have changed the world because what is being, what's happening there doesn't correspond to any international norms and the principles with which we have lived since the Second World War. We read recently where there have been demonstrations in Estonia by uh, Russian speakers. Demonstrations? Have, no, no, no. Not we, demonst haven't, we haven't had demonstrations. Okay, talk about then what uh, is going on within your country. Are there any kinds of um, concerns by uh, Russian speaking, the Russian speaking population. Talk about the Russian speaking population in Estonia. Well, I'll start saying that the Russian speaking population is uh, approximately one fourth of our population. I'm Russian. I'm Russian speaking. I speak Russian with my mother, and I don't need protection. I'm Estonian citizen. I live in Estonia. I'm Estonian ambassador. So for me, there is a huge difference when we speak about Russian-speaking population. There are Russians who have lived for centuries in Estonia, who are part of the country, who are part of the culture, of the everyday life of the country. And there are Soviets who were brought or who came to Estonia during the Soviet occupation mm -hmm. and whose understanding might be slightly different. Some of them see Estonia as their home, they see Estonia as being part of Europe and themselves being part of Europe, and they like it. And I, I think that there is, there is a small part, I don't know the percentages, I don't know the numbers, but there is a small part that shares the views of Mr. Putin that the fall of Soviet Union was the biggest geopolitical catastrophe, and who don't accept Estonia being an independent country, but even without knowing the exact numbers, I know that the number is not big. The children of those Soviets do want to live in Estonia, do want to have the positive sides of living in Estonia. And anyway, they haven't left Estonia. We regained dependence in 91, which means that there has been plenty of time to leave the country if somebody doesn't like to live in the country. Notwithstanding the fact that you're a member of the European Union and NATO, are you concerned about what Russia is doing in Ukraine, and to, to what extent do you think that they could extend this type of aggression to places like uh, the Baltics? Of course we're concerned. Of course we're concerned, and, and maybe we're more concerned, because we are the bordering country, and because we have the history. What's happened in Crimea was exactly what happened in, uh, in the Baltic states in the summer and spring of 1940. So we have the his history that reminds but at the same time, I'd like to say that being members of NATO, even more NATO than EU, we feel more confident. Mm -hmm. Because NATO has taken already actions to show the deterrence and to show presence in the Baltic states. We have NATO air policing in the Baltic states. At the moment, we are negotiating on having more NATO presence in the region. We need it. Because what we see today is that Russia listens to force, not using force, but showing of force. And the more we have boots of NATO on the ground in the Baltics, the more secure we feel.